Hi, uh, welcome to Everyday Order, where we are looking at the practices of the monastic community and how they can influence our daily worship today. My name is Mike Jude, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, just like last time, I want to be able to share that a good friend, Kate, is hosting a, a discussion group about how to implement these practices in your daily life. So it's a great chance to connect with other people who are practically um, practicing these uh, spiritual disciplines uh, to learn uh, how it's working for them, uh, but also to learn uh, best practices. Today we're going to be talking about something called breath prayer. Breath prayer. Uh, breath prayer is the act of focusing your breathing um, to be able to calm your heart as you engage in prayer. Breath prayer is a really interesting thing, and, and right now it's actually Sunday afternoon, even though this video is released on Monday uh, morning, and I just couldn't wait because uh, I am in need of practicing breath prayer right now. Breathing is such an integral part of our bodies, and often we can separate our spirits from our bodies. Breath prayer is a way of combining both our acknowledgement of our physical needs as well as our spiritual needs. If you think about an athlete, um, breathing is a regular practice to calm themselves, to help uh, focus their minds and help focus their bodies. Breath prayer is a practice where you are breathing in and focusing your mind uh, and your heart on the Lord and breathing out, focusing your mind and your heart on the Lord. When you think about breathing, it's such an integral part of our physical health. Um, in times of stress, anxiety, and anger, what happens in your body is blood flow rushes to your head um, to help you be more sensitive and attuned to what's around you. And a lot of that is for your benefit, but for a lot of us, that stress, anxiety, uh, and often anger is just a normal, normal part of our days where it's not caused by uh, a situation, uh, an imminent event that demands that type of focus. We live throughout our days with this constant pressure, um, but even if you aren't there, this is still an act of calming your body, calming your mind, and reminding your heart, reminding yourself that the spirit, the breath of God, is what fills us. I, uh, for the past year or so, have been struggling with anxiety, and something that I felt physically uh, is when you ride a roller coaster, maybe you're familiar this, with this, when you kind of go over a hill, on a roller coaster and you kind of get that feeling where it feels like your heart and your lungs kind of leap up and then you go down and you catch your breath. As someone who struggles with anxiety, there are regular parts of my day that that is just a normal feeling where it feels like I'm having to catch my breath um, and it's not based on a imminent event that's happening. It's just a normal day with normal things happening. And so the practice of breath prayer has been such a blessing to me to calm my heart um, and to worship God fully in dependence on him. The breath prayer can be linked all the way back to as soon as the third century. Uh, and the most common breath prayer is found in Mark 10 verse 47. Mark 10, verse 47. I'm going to read that from the ESV. I'm going to start in verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. This is verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him telling him to be silent, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. 
Throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me, unco- let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Often a breath prayer, the most common breath prayer linked all the way back to the third century is from this verse in verse 47. Lord Jesus, have mercy on a sinner like me. There's this desperation, this call, this recognizing that something isn't right and that there is Jesus who makes things right. There's this desperation of going to God with a dependence. Often in Western culture, we can see prayer primarily as a conversation. And our minds are intellectually engaged as we're having this back and forth with God, or maybe for you uh, or for many of us, it's just a one-way conversation. But Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. And for a lot of us, that seems not realistic because when we relegate prayer to simply an intellectual conversation with God, there's no way that we could do that all day without ceasing. The breath prayer is one of the ways that help us engage to pray without ceasing, to go to God in desperation. But maybe you're also like me, and in engaging in prayer, my mind can just go a million miles an hour, and before I realize it, I'm not even talking to God anymore. I'm just thinking. Uh, I'm not intentionally inviting him in. I'm not focused on his goodness, on his mercy, on his grace through Jesus, on the dependence of the Holy Spirit, and I start thinking about the tasks of the day, or I start thinking about the worries of the day. I'm not saying that's wrong. Um, But without the intentionality of finding our physical rest in God, prayer just seems like a one-way conversation or maybe just talking to a wall. Breath prayer helps us focus our hearts and our minds, enjoying the rest in our bodies, knowing how God created us. And when he created us, he said it was good. He created our bodies with the need to be filled with oxygen, for the need for the oxygen for our bodies to rest, for our hearts to slow. And it's being able to take time to do that together. The breath prayer is a simple statement that's able to be said as you're breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Like I said, dating all the way back to the third century, this breath prayer has been a part of uh, Christian practice. To breathe in, Lord Jesus, have mercy on a sinner like me. And it's this focused prayer where you continue to think, if this is the only thing that I think of, I will have found rest in God. For me, I I don't want to be too... Uh, intimate, um, but for me, my breath air, uh, excuse me, my breath prayer is you are my deepest rest. Rest is a thing that I'm desperate for. Rest is a thing that I crave that I can't find in many places. So spending time to breathe, to focus my heart and my mind on God through Christ, depending on the Holy Spirit, to remind myself You are my deepest rest. So I want to take a few minutes to practice this together. Remembering that God designed our bodies, and in Genesis, after he made man, he said it was very good. That your body is not an effect of the fall. The fact that your body needs oxygen to fill it, to give you life, is not a negative thing thing is not an aspect of the fall, but it's a part of God's very good design that we are able to rest our bodies in that. 
And then our minds are prone to go a million miles an hour thinking over and over and over again to think about the things that we need and petitions to God, to think about the things we need to do, the task list that I have, and the list goes on and on and on to remember a simple statement, a simple statement that aligns us with our need dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit, dependent on God and the mercy of his Son. So we have practiced this, but I want to continue to practice this and really specifically look at breath prayer. So thinking about our bodies, it is best to sit at the edge of your chair. Well, I'm in a chair right now. You can't see that I am. It's helpful to put your feet on the ground, firmly planted, being rooted to the earth, to the ground, to have a straight back, to fill your lungs with air, and to have your palms facing upward in a receiving posture, knowing that God will respond in the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're someone who doesn't like to sit. Maybe you need to stand. Maybe you need to lay down. Maybe you kneel. Whatever it is, think about consciously what are you doing and how does your body posture impact how you're engaging in this prayer practice. So to start, I want you just to close your eyes if you're able to and breathe in through your nose. Breathe out. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out. As you continue to breathe in and breathe out, remember that you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the breath of God that gives us life and power. Then you can breathe out all the worries, anxieties, and stress that the world offers, that people put on us, that we put on ourselves. Breathe in the goodness of the Holy Spirit. Breathe out all dependence on ourselves. I want you to continue to breathe deeply. And as you breathe in, consider focusing on these words. Say them in your heart and in your mind. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on a sinner like me. Lord Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on a sinner like me. I want you to take three more deep breaths to close out our prayer. Two more. One more. Amen. 
I hope that this was a blessing to you, uh, a practice that you can practice regularly. Uh, if you're able to steal away time in your home uh, on your way to work or uh, before you go to bed, or maybe you are living alone and you need to step outside to find a place uh, that is not frantic or depressing or frustrating to put yourself in a position to not just intellectually know that God gives us rest, but to, in our physical beings, experience the rest that God gives. Consider thinking about what is a deep need that you desire, a deep need that you have, that only God can provide. And consider that being your breath prayer. When I read the Word of God, when I enter into meditation and contemplation, I always start and end with the breath prayer. Sometimes I start with the breath prayer and I don't ever get out of it because it is so restful, because um, my mind is going so fast that I need a singular statement to remind myself of God's goodness and love. As I said before, we would love to dialogue with you about these practices. My good friend Kate is leading a discussion group. Her email address is shared in the description below, and I would love for you to email her to share that you're interested in being a part of that conversation. Well, thank you so much. As always, I would love to interact with you. Um, either through the discussion group or via email or in the comment section. Maybe there is a practice that you do um, that isn't listed or that we haven't gone through. I would love to hear your experiences. Or maybe there's a practice that you know of that you've never done that you would like uh, to learn more about and, uh, and I can research and practice and bring that to you. Thank you so much and uh, I pray that you are living in peace and finding your rest in God through Christ in his mercy and in the power of the Holy Spirit.